Cristina, Inge. This has been so wonderful. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So many. Hi. Hi. Hi. Hi. Hi. Hi. Hi. A lot of people. Hello. Today. Good afternoon. Hey. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I was uh, seeing that, uh, realizing that today is our fourth week cooking online. So I am so happy, not only because it's the fourth one, but because for the first time I can put this one, like I have to say today. <laughs> because we have Turkish dish today. So we have Mirai, cheese. So it's the Turkish and Dominican or what? What's the other yeah. one? Yeah. Of course. Turkish and Dominican. And Turkish. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Welcome. Uh, we will have Mirai. She will. Uh, I. I think that is the one of, or similar to one of my best uh, favorite dishes in the Turkey. And mine is uh, honker bendi. But I was seeing the recipe is something similar. But I will let uh, Mirai to to talk about the dish. And uh, please, Mirai, introduce yourself. This uh, amazing uh, public that you have. Hi. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Alicia. Uh, oh, I like your hair. Uh, well, um, my name is Mirai, uh, and actually, um, um, I am a uh, press officer of the European Union in Turkey, and I love cooking. Uh, and the reason why I am so much interested in cooking is because uh, we have my family, my, my mother's side, uh, the organs of restaurants for 23 generations. So my mom also used to have a restaurant. She had done like two, three years ago. And uh, the reason why I'm cooking this dish today is because one of the... For Mother's Day. Dia la madre. Dice, mira, eh. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, okay. For the cual. You cannot hear me well? Yeah, how about now? I'm singing your voice, but the S is understanding. So maybe uh, we need to close our mic. Hmm? I will change. Because we are very yeah. cool in your voice. Maybe, maybe the, the rest... Can I give you a tip? Uh, uh, Just if a second. Is, please mute the microphones. Please uh, mute the microphones. I can really give you a tip if you want. Uh, wait, uh, last week we uh, mute everybody and uh, I think that was... Um... <laughs> but not Mirai, please. <laughs> Mirai muted herself. <laughs> Is it okay now? Mirai muted herself. No, I did not. Okay, can you hear me? Everybody can hear me? Now we hear you oh. better. Angel, can you hear me now? Now it's better. Now it's better. Now okay. we hear you well. Okay. Yeah. okay. If you can hear me now, I can. Can I continue? Okay, I'm con I, I continue. All right. So uh, yes, the reason why uh, I wanted to cook this dish is because uh, my mom was doing it very good. I don't know if I am that good in that. And uh, I love cooking and during this time uh, when I'm at home too, uh, I have been cooking every day because it's like sort of a meditation for me. Uh, I'm not a professional, uh, just my family side is, is really interested in this. And today I will cook you Ali Nazik. Uh, Ali Nazik is, uh, well, aubergine uh, has a very special place in Turkish uh, cuisine because we put aubergine in in most of the special things that we're cooking so uh, it's like a bread uh, but what I consider about aubergine is that when you're cooking aubergine uh, the the way that it behaves I, I, I should say that way the aubergine behaves like a bread 
so that it, it takes a lot of uh, oil when you are cooking it or you know when you are boiling it it takes the water so it's different than the other vegetables and if you can cook it well it really makes a um, difference in your in your cooking in the kitchen that's what what i see so we have got a lot of mezes with uh with like small uh, um, dishes that we drink with rake as well for with uh, aubergine but today the one i'm going to make you is ali nazik ali is a name nazik is a name too so it's a men's name the way it is uh, given is that because of an ottoman person so that they put this name the guide name to the food but we have similar fruits in turkish cuisine which comes from uh the which comes from the uh, uh some important people and ali nazik is one of those important people who is coming to your kitchens today so what we need uh, i will move my camera a little bit to show you the ingredients so uh let me show you first uh, we, we need to have um just a second okay here we have lamb onion um so my onion was quite big so i cut half of it so i'm i'm going to use uh, uh, half of it and then we have the uh, oil you can use olive oil or uh, any liquid oil that you would like to use not like something very stinky like sesame oil or anything but should be um um i mean the best choice is olive oil but something similar to that could be okay for the yogurt uh, yogurt is just a side dish there so for for the yogurt you will have just uh, condensed yogurt some uh, garlic and then on it uh, it's nice to put some olive oil um, a virgin olive oil on it it makes taste better and for the aubergines here are the aubergines and we have the milk uh, we have some flour butter garlic and the aubergine has already done so for this one I just want to give you a hint about something in Turkey. Uh, uh, when we want to do this patlıcan uh, aubergine, uh, in order to make this kind of meze, uh, we are cooking it, but we are grilling it. So how we grill it? I will show you first how to grill it. Maybe you already know it, but I just wanted to show you. So we open the oven like this. We put it there, and then we turn it like. For, for for example 10 minutes you would understand it would be like the cover of it would be like burning so for each of them you need to uh, spend like for example some 10 minutes each and then afterwards you peel that hard cover and after you peel the hard cover uh, in the very middle of it when you are especially doing barbecue too it, it is that sense the outside of it should be very well baked very well cooked and then after which you can smash inside. So for the aubergines we have this, but in order to get rid of all the things, great Turkish industry has invented this one, which is an already cooked one. So this is not a pre-cooked thing, which is, uh, you cannot eat it like this, but it is for those people who doesn't want to spend time by doing this for 10 minutes each and it it makes a lot of dirt in your kitchen too. So when you are using it, you can either do it. So if you are right now would like to do it uh, when I'm cooking it too, uh, at the same time consecutively, uh, you need to spend some time. So how would you prefer? I have got the one which is ready here, or I can show you how to do it together. So I need your contribution on this. Yes. I already roasted my aubergine, so we're ready to go. Uh -huh. so, okay, so if it is fine with everybody, and if those ones, I don't know who is, go who is living in Turkey, who are not living in Turkey. So for those ones who are living in Turkey, find this, közlenmiş patlıcan, I will send you. So if you find this, it is much easier, and it is, it, it, uh, it's an easy one. And you can use it for many things in Turkish cooking. So let's go back um, here. Yes, and then for this one, we have got the aubergine and other stuff. So I will start first by um, the blend. 
because um, it is the king of uh, this three plates, okay? So for the lamb, what I am going to do is that the olive oil or whatever oil that you are going to use, uh, let me open my, okay, oven here. So. What do we do if we roast it? Uh, um, a question from Clara, can you please? There is a, a question from Inzre asking what do we do if we roast it? If we roast um, it? No, the point is then uh, I, I said everybody has uh, at least the ones that follow the, the previous step have roasted in the oven the ah, Yeah, that is okay, that is okay, it's not a problem. If it is very well roasted, it is not a problem too. But uh, the, the way we do usually, uh, yeah, yeah, you can grill it in the oven as well, she's right. Usually yeah. what we do is that, I mean, in Turkish cuisine, the way we do is that like this. Next time, I mean, for uh, Hünkar we do it like this. Okay, and then we do it for each side. And if you roasted it, it's not a problem as well. But mine it was already ready cooked, so, uh, um, because I didn't know that, like, where people are living, I, could, I couldn't give that hint before. But you can do it that way. Those people living in Turkey can easily find it from most of the markets. So, uh, uh, I will put the oil now. And then we will put the onions, one onion chopped. Okay. And how much oil? The oil was like, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, um, let me show you. It is like two spoons. Yeah, okay. yeah, two spoons. Of cup. yeah, yeah. one quarter of a cup. Like yeah. uh, 50 grams. Okay. And then we will. So this one, unlike many other dishes, you should not really put, um, you should not cook this too much because the reason is when you cook onions too much here if they shouldn't be like pinkish yellowish is okay so i will turn this around for some time like two or three minutes because when they are overcooked the taste changes and that taste is not what i want what i want is that that smell of onion there i want to take it with my lamb so i don't want to kill them in turkish we say killing so we're not going to kill them it's just they will faint <laughs> okay so now i'm putting my lamb here So let me put this uh, here while I'm cooking this. And there is a question. Uh, <laughs> so, there is okay, a question for you. This. They're asking which part of the lamb we should buy in Turkish language, please. In Turkish language, which part of the lamb I cook? Well, yeah. I just but I give an online. Uh, uh, just a second. I give an online order and I told them that I want chopped lamb and they just send me what is ready. So I didn't ask something for specific, but what my mom asked is that boot. Boot is upper leg. So this is asking. usually I prefer, but this one, uh, because they are so nowadays, they are very picky in the things that I ask because they are like, they are very busy, you know. So I just told them that bring me chopped uh, lamb. So they said, okay. Is it but Kush usually, Thank you very much. They're asking Kush if Kush Abbas is okay. How do you write boot? B-U-T? Boot, B-U-T, yes. Yeah, B-U-T. From B-U-T, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. So we are cooking it like this. They're also asking and if you can do it also with Dana or if it has to be with Dana, Kush. yes, sure. You can do it with dana too, 
But Donna would not be as soft as lamb when doing this because the reason is lamb is already very soft meat and on top of it, it's not very easy to find that very soft part of the Donna if you don't know it. So when you're asking for the soft part of Donna, you can uh, ask for küşleme of it, which is here of the animal uh -huh. in spine, very close there. That is the softest part. The filet. In dana. If you are doing it with dana, uh -huh. that part, that uh -huh. the shoulder. Point, so the very close to the, uh, very the close bones. To the bones, bone yeah. of the animal, spine, you can ask for kushleme. Now I am uh, telling it, it's K, U, it's U, S, L, E, M, E. A little bit more expensive than the others, and you should pre order it from your butcher because sometimes they don't, I mean, they, they, they would sell it easily because from every animal you're just having this big. So that is, mwah. it's like Turkish lokum, we say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So, so now, okay without burning this, but also uh, it should be a little bit fire uh, while you're cooking this one, not very slow cooking. Okay. And then now I'm bringing my pepper. Thank you, Chef Mem, for self-appointing as interpreter. Very useful for everybody. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so You're so, welcome. You're very welcome. Livio is asking if you put salt. Yes, I put the salt and pepper right now. Ah, here is okay. my pepper. And my salt is here. Pepper and salt, please put it a little bit more than you usually put pepper. It would taste nice with this one. So. Then you, you put The question, do you make it at a high uh, fire? High fire, fire, yes, please. High fire, please. High fire. Yes, and the, a little bit more pepper. And, and onion and... I cannot hear you well now, sorry. I don't know who, who was speaking. Okay, is there another question? Let me see the question. Uh, yes, you are helping a lot. <laughs> Okay. Oh, All right. Ah, Claudia had a problem with the. With the so thing. for this one, we can wait it to be cooked. We can close it, and then it can cook itself. Or I can wait for you, and then we can continue talking on this. How would you prefer? Wait here and talk more, since this is being cooked. Or we can pass to the aubergine. How would you like? How long it should be on the fire? Ah, uh, well, maybe more five, 10 minutes. It seems like now it's pinkish. Uh, let me okay. show you mine. You can tell us a joke meanwhile. Look. <laughs> so it should be uh, well cooked because, you know, in Turkey, uh, I have to say this, we don't have something like, uh, uh, I mean, everything we eat is already well cooked. In Turkish cuisine, we don't have this like, uh, um, uh, like many, in many other cuisines, uh, we never say, uh, they never come and ask us, how would you like it to be cooked? If you're eating a Turkish, uh, in a Turkish restaurant, because we eat well cooked meat. So, uh, in the Turkish way of eating the meat, uh, I'm not telling it like leave it a little bit raw or uh, medium cooked. We don't have this. So in Turkish cuisine, we cook usually well. So okay. there's no, there's no rare in Turkish cuisine. Sorry? No rare in Turkish cuisine. Rare, yani not uh, cooked. You know, there is steak that you eat rare. Uh -huh. Yes, we always eat well cooked food. Uh, well cooked meat. Right. So, okay. Uh, except in la carda and some other things in the fish, 
uh, or some meat which we cook by salt and some other thing. Uh, if we are cooking it, we don't have the option, uh, we don't use this option of uh, rare cook, um, uh, medium cook, we don't have this at all. Mirai, there is also a question, what do you do if uh, the meat has some fat in it? Sorry, sorry, sorry, I missed it. I if took it out. If the kuzu has some fat in it, what do you do? Do you keep it or not? It is, no, of course, keep it, keep it, please, because, uh, well, that gives okay. a lot of taste. In Turkish cuisine, we like that part. It's not that we, it should be much, but here I have from those two, and uh, when you buy boot, it will be much less, uh, depending on which part of the boot, of course, we give, but it will be much less. But uh, it's good, it's nice to have that cut of the lamb because it gives a lot of taste, you know. Uh, the smell of it, uh, it would be much better. We'll just keep it. Perfect. Another question is about the pepper. Do you use red or black pepper? Just a second. Oh, I cannot hear you well because of the cooking. Yes. If you, you, if add you, you if you use black or red pepper? Oh, I'm using black pepper, uh, not red pepper. Red pepper, uh, we can only use it. I prepared it as well. We can only use it uh, for decoration afterwards because when you are eating the uh, aubergine and uh, meat and yogurt, that red pepper would give a nice taste if you put it on at the end, which I was going to tell you at the end, but it is only, um, could be at the end that you can use for, for uh, decoration. Thank you, Mirai. So mine has not yet been cooked. So. Uh, this uh, is in the meantime, I, was, I, I would like to tell you something. Do you guys have soft cheese at home? Soft cheese. Goat cheese? Kashar. Um, some sort of, you know, soft cheese that would melt. Mozzarella. Okay. Ah, okay, yeah. yes. If you have grounded one, a grounded one, to put like on a pizza, you know? That yeah, kind jack, of, jack cheese. If you have it. Could you prepare some a little bit more from uh, a little bit from that too? Because, uh, but then I write okay, very good. Yes, that is what you should have. So if you have uh, something like that, um, well maybe three four spoons of it, which is like this big. Okay. This one, I have to tell when you are cooking the aubergine. Uh, you may need it. The reason why you may need it is that. Uh, well, actually, in the normal recipes, not everybody puts that cheese in the aubergine. But in, uh, in the way that we were cooking, especially when I asked my mom to cook for me, or I am cooking other people, I like to put some uh, soft cheese in it because it makes it... Um, how can I tell it? Uh, <laughs> the taste is better, and when you are eating it, it, it just stretches. You know, I like that thing too. So if you want it to be uh, that cheese taste, not not uh, very hard cheese. Yes, chewy. Okay, Imre told me chewy. Yeah. So if you like that che uh, cheese taste and that chewy way of eating it, you can use uh, uh, some soft cheese in it too. So let me con okay. Yes, leave you. Um, it is the same. You can use mozzarella, but since it is, if it is a grounded one, uh, if it is a uh, uh, grounded, shall I say grounded? Yes, grounded. Okay. So it, it should be small pieces, ground, yes, grounded one. If it is a grounded one, uh, it will be much better. So, uh, so like that you can put that one. Yes, like little like, pieces. 
So what I am using, for example, is that. Yeah, yeah. I did it like that. So I'm going to use it. Sorry. So this is almost about to be cooked. Uh, let me take it to the slow cooking. And if you are okay, if you all are okay, let's pass the aubergine. Is that fine? So there is a, Ace U is asking, when is the meat cooked? My water has evaporated. What is water? You shouldn't put any water in it. Uh, let's say the liquid. No, no for me it's too watery. Maybe because I put the salt too early. Ah, my water has evaporated. Is that the okay? Water, it evaporates? The water of the, of the meat or... Because yeah, there's the no water. We don't, we don't put any water in it. We just put Oh yeah, the water of the same meat. It's the water of the meat that is releasing. Ah, that water, water of the meat. Evaporated. We shouldn't, okay, we shouldn't have any water of the meat because at the end of the day, what you should have is uh, oil and the meat and, and the onions here. So maybe he put less oil than he should. That could be. Um, if uh, it is you know, Mirai, this happens, Mirai, this happens when you put the salt too early. I did the same, so I had, um, uh, I changed the pan. Yeah. And also, Sevnem is suggesting you need high fire to avoid the meat water. Yeah, but high fire, high fire, if you, if you cook it in high fire, the meat Good can part. keep the water more in its side. If you do it slowly, then it would it, it, it would lose it. So it is it is good to good to have it in high fire always for, for this kind of cooking. Thank you. Okay. Mine is almost cooked too. So I'm just leaving inside. Just a second. Okay. Here. And then now I'm passing to the other jeans. So for the aubergines here uh we have the butter so butter is the most important thing here because butter gives a very good taste so let me okay and then we put the butter Do we peel the baked aubergine? Yes, you should peel the baked aubergine because uh, uh, after you uh, uh, bake it, the uh, cover of it uh, should be very hard. So in order not to uh, uh, have that cover, you should take it out and then you should chop it. So the, the very, let me show you, just a second. The very end, at the very end, after you chop it, it should be like, for example, one of the pieces I will show you. So it should be like these pieces, you know? And at the end, it should look like this, after you chop everything. So I'm going back to my butter. My aubergines are not peeled. I bake, roast it, and roasted them. Uh, how about how about the cover of them? I mean, the the, the uh, outside of it. How is it? If it is not very hard, I mean. No, it's it, like, it's like this. Oh. Hmm. I can try to remove it. Okay. Yeah, well, it might it might have been a little bit dry. Yeah. Then, right. if it is the case. Uh, they, first of all, they should be much smaller. That's what I want to say. And the second thing is, if you think that they're eatable in that way too, please go ahead. Um, because I don't know how um, they are. 
uh, oops. Now, after we do this, I'm putting my uh, flare in it. So it is this much. It is, uh, well, actually, uh, one spoon flour, I said, but this is a full spoon. So it could be like two, two regular, one big spoon. So, uh, so I'm putting it here to the butter. And then... Sorry, what is that? This is flour. flour. Ah, flour. Okay. So, now I am cooking this. With, together with butter. Okay. So this one, for this one, it needs to be a little bit pinky. Oh, smells so good. <laughs> Let's wait. So, when we are doing this, Okay, now it was, it was a more golden yellow. Now it is turning a little bit uh, pinky, not too much, little. So you will ha not have this shining gold. And then Mm. Okay, so now, uh, yes, now after it starts to get high like this, we are going to put our aubergines in it. Hop. Hmm. And then, just a second, oh, sorry, huh. what happened? Huh. Okay, now we are cooking it together with the aubergines. We can put the garlic, so we had two garlics. It depends on how much you like garlic. I like garlic a lot. So I'm putting two big garlics, but it depends how you would like to do it. The uh, grounded garlics, they are. I put it here too. Now, it is getting harder. So now it is getting much harder. Just a second. Yes. And um, I will put my milk right now. But when you are putting your milk, uh, I said one and a half um, glass of milk. So you can also look at the uh, how, how your food is right now just a second oops how much milk it was one and a one and a half glass but one glass could be okay too just 
Okay. Check it when you're cooking it, okay. For example, I put it this much now, one and a half glass, it's a little bit more than one and a half glass, mine is. I prepared it a little bit more. So I put some. After, after, after putting one glass, it looks like this. Or you can put a little bit more too, depending on how big your aubergines are, of course. So now it should look something like um, I mean, it shouldn't be very hard, but not very liquid as well at the same time. So now, did you put salt in this? No, I haven't put salt yet. No, no, no. I will put salt and pepper at the end. So now you can do it in a high fire. Yes. When you see that it starts to boil, when you leave it and it starts to boil, now you can put your soft cheese if you like. I like. What when? Sorry. So if if if after it starts to boil like this, now it started to boil. You know, look, it's boiling now. So after it starts to boil. And you get the smell of this aubergines now. Um, now you can turn down heat a little bit, leave it there because it's boiling. And then you will put soft cheese in it if you like. But if you say that, no, I don't want this cheesy thing and I just want to go a little bit with the uh, aubergine itself, that's fine as well. But I like putting yeah. some soft cheese in it. Yeah. So in some recipes, they don't put soft cheese, but in some, yes, they put. It depends on how you would like to do it. So I will, I will put it. And if you have the soft cheese, you can put it there too. Oops. Let me put it here, sorry. This looks yes. delicious. Tatiana is saying that if you want to have very tasty aubergine, when you finish grilling, put them in a plastic bag, bind it and keep it for one hour. It will be also more easier to peel, but you have to use whole aubergine. Don't cut it before grilling. Thank you. Ah. Yes, we use all of our gym. For this, for this uh, grilling thing, which we are doing, uh, we usually, in Turkey, what we do is that, we are doing it on oven like this. And then uh, we are using the whole of our gym. We put it to side because when you cook it, it is, it is very hot. Uh, when, when you, uh, it's almost like burned uh, outside. So you have to wait it, but my mom, <laughs> That's a tip from my mom, which I want to uh, share with you, from my mother's family, actually. They put it under water. So you, when you put it under water, like peeling the eggs after boiling it, you can easily boil it right after doing it. So if you wait for five minutes after roasting it and put it in uh, under... Uh, oops. Sorry, can you see me? Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. If, if, if you put it under uh, water before peeling it, that would help too. And then you will keep this part, the top part, when you are peeling it, because you have to hold it from there. After you peel it, after baking it on the, uh, grilling it all on the oven and then peel it, you will put it on the side. After it, it, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, it's totally peeled, you will chop it. It could be 
this aubergine, but in Turkey, we have aubergines like um, apples, yes. like that. Like so a that, balloon. Yes, exactly. So that one is an option too. I like those ones too. And, and it, it, is, it has got more bread in it. That's what I call the bread of the aubergine. So inside, you can, you can get more of the uh, uh, uh, vegetable. So now I have a question. question. Okay. Yes, sure. Uh, why do you need to peel it? You just, after you take it out from uh, the stove, just cut it uh, all along. And with a tablespoon, you take the meat from inside. You don't need to peel it. This is an option too. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, I have a oh, question. Oh, yes, yes, sure. And uh, you don't use uh, tomato, tomato in the meat? No, I don't use you... No. Okay, thank you. Okay, now you can put uh, the pepper and the salt now. With this opportunity, I would like to say, Angel, take a caption, <laughs> caption photo of me from this and send it to me later because Angel is the reason why I am here today. I was sharing a paella with him and then he suggested me to get in touch with Alicia. Thanks to him. Gracias. So it is the reason why I'm cooking for you today. Thank you for coming. It's always <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Angel. So now I'm putting the pepper. Well, for this one, I like putting the, the uh, grounded pepper from, from directly from this one because uh, I like tasting the, this a little bit bigger peppers in it. Mm -hmm. Maybe even more. So it depends on your taste, but I like it with uh, more pepper because when you have all this aubergine butter and then the cheese paste, that pepper really uh, matches that. I mean, it, the more the pepper, I think the better the taste is. So I like it with pepper. What is the difference between this dish and the um, hunker Randy? Sorry? The difference in, between this one and hunker In hunker Bayandi, you don't have the meat. Hunker Bayandi is the simple only one with uh, aubergine. Ah, okay. Okay, he's, he's, Hünkar means um, uh, the person who comes after the, after the Sultan. So, uh, Hünkar Beyendi means the um, number two, like the favorite, uh, the, the favorite of the Sultan. <laughs> <laughs> Livio is asking what about salt, because he didn't see you putting it. No? I, I put the salt already, this is my salt. This is my pepper. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So, I don't find salt. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you can put normal salt and normal, just no, regular, was... these okay. ones too. Thank you. So now this will be cooked for a while. In the meantime, we can chat or we can do the yogurt. The yogurt is the easiest, but I like it that way too. Uh, because what I do with yogurt is that with, with Turkish cuisine, when we are eating meat, there is this thing that we are doing a lot, which you cannot see in other cuisines maybe. We are putting yogurt uh, next to it, side of it. So we have that, for example, Iskander, which is a great kebab. I like it a lot. So with Iskander too, with, with, with a lot of Turkish food, when, when we are eating meat, we are also putting, uh, I'm trying to put the telephone in a proper place, sorry. Uh, so when we are eating meat in Turkey, uh, we, we are eating it so much with yogurt. So it's more like this Asian thing with, with the Indian food, with the Indian cuisine too. So we like uh, eating that together. So with this one also yogurt goes um, good. So in the meantime, I can prepare my yogurt. And then, yeah, I have my garlic already. I prepared my condensed yogurt, but I, I uh, mixed it a little bit before. 
So it's not very condensed right now. And then I will put my just uh, garlic inside the, the, the yogurt. Yeah. And then I will put some salt in it inside the yogurt. Yeah. So this is just yogurt, garlic, and salt only. But when you are putting in your plate, so when the other is cooking, I I I would like to put this in my plate too. And Can then, you show us uh, the texture of the yogurt? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, so it's kind of liquidy. It should not be like this. The reason mine is a little bit like that is because I put the condensed yogurt together with everything and I mixed it with, with the machine in order to, uh, what, what do I mean by condensed yogurt? Somebody is asking. In Turkey, we have got two kinds of yogurt for, uh, for, for those um, meze and cooking and when we are eating at the side of it. We are usually using condensed yogurt. So if you go to a rakı restaurant, for example, a fish restaurant, when you order something with yogurt, it always comes with a condensed yogurt. So it is more like a um, uh, cream yogurt. That's what we do. But with this one, uh, because I had this machine uh, thing before, uh, it is not that condensed anymore. I shouldn't use it that much. But anyways, so the better it is, is having less liquid. Süzme yoğurt, yes, in Turkish, thanks to Şebnem. Mm. So, I'm just putting it, yes, süzme. Mm. Just a second. Now, I'm putting it here. What I like is that when serving this, no, the yogurt usually does not see you. <laughs> I'm reading your messages at the same time. So uh, when I am, just a second, when I am putting a yogurt as a side dish, when I'm cooking Turkish food, I put olive oil on it because I like it. Just a minute. So, what I am doing with that. Yes, here you go. So that olive, that virgin olive oil taste with yogurt and uh, garlic, I like this taste together. And if you want something more on it, this is what we do a lot. Nine and mint, uh, dry mint, we are using it a lot, but if you have um, what was it? Uh, Hesleyin'in İngilizcesi ne hatırlayanlar buraya gelsin. I cannot remember it. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Which one? Basil. Ha, basil, basil, basil, basil. Thanks a lot. Okay, basil. Okay, you can. I mean, for those people who don't use uh, dried uh, mint. You can also use uh, basil, dried basil on it. Or in Turkey, we have got something very nice, even better than basil, dried reyhan, here I have. I'm using it for a lot of things. So in order to uh, give a little bit more taste to my yogurt, I like doing it too. So now I'm, I will put some, let's put it here. Okay. All right, so I will put some uh, dried reyhan basil, but this is a Turkish version. This is a red basil we are using. So the, the taste is a little bit different, but it is close. But you can order it online. This I get it from uh, governor of uh, Malatya <laughs> because I was telling him about this and he just gave me as a gift. Uh, but this is something very nice that it smells so good. Really, you would love it. And then you can put some uh, nane mint to dry nane. And the side thing would look like that. Yes. 
Okay, so this is the uh, easy part that we are using uh, as the side dish together with our meat. Now I'm checking on my aubergines. Mm. So, uh, can you see? Oh, okay. Maybe they might be cooked a little bit more. Well, um, this one is, uh, okay, like, I mean, it, it's good like that because when it, it gets colder, it will be much thicker. Uh, but if you put more flour in it, it would be a little bit more thicker. It depends on how you prefer. If you want it a little bit liquid uh, with butter and aubergine taste more in it, uh, it would be more liquid. And uh, also, it's good not to put too much flour in it too. Okay. So mine's almost done. I don't know yours. Is it okay if I put the, my telephone here and then somewhere here? Okay. And then now I'm bringing my aubergines. Who has Raku at home tonight? <laughs> For those people who has Raku, just take a piece of Turkish white cheese and with this one and the yogurt, mm, it would be nice. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. <laughs> so now, after putting my uh, aubergines, okay. So this is the bed, bed of it. Now in the middle, I will put my meat. Please mute, mute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Mm. Oh, I am so hungry. <laughs> Okay, now that is done too. Just give me a second. And, well, I have paprika here, which is Hungarian, has nothing to do with Turkish food, but I like this paprika. And I have the uh, red uh, pepper here, which is Turkish from uh, Eastern Turkey. Uh, so the best ones you can really find in Urfa, I think. Uh, so when you're traveling to Urfa, you can buy isot from there. It's a different kind of pepper as well. So that they're roasting it and the smell is a little bit different. You can use that one depending on how you like the taste. But this one is not an isot, this is just a red meat. I, that red pepper that uh, I get from uh, uh, Urfa again. So that one is just for decoration and if, when you're eating it you can choose so i will decorate my plate with that yeah and in the very middle uh, middle i will put the paprika this hungarian paprika 
ground paprika. That is a nice taste too, I like it. We have similar ones, but not like this one. Mm -hmm. It's for the middle. Yes. Okay. Now just give me a second because I would like to put it somewhere, uh, somewhere better than here. So if you're ready, now I'm showing you my plate from the top. So, yeah. We have the lamp in the middle, and the bed is like that, and then we have the yogurt, and it's like this. In Turkey, uh, when we're eating these kind of food, we also put uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, uh, we also eat a lot of rice with it. So the reason why I didn't want to cook rice together with this one, but preferred yogurt, is that it's light. Because when you have the rice, um, when you're eating meat in Turkey, they go along. Uh, uh, meat and rice that we're, or bulgur, we are doing it together. But with this one, it's already very heavy. We have the butter in it and the lamb and everything. And if I cook rice with it, like a traditional way that we're cooking, um, it would be heavy. So uh, in order to have it a little bit lighter, it's good to have yogurt in it, uh, um, raw yogurt at the side of it, than having the rice. But if you prefer rice, we are doing a little bit more fatty uh, way of uh, pilau. Uh, so it is not like this Chinese one or the ones uh, you eat in your countries. It is more similar to paella. So uh, the paella kind of softness, but more buttery. Hmm? So it is how we do it. Uh, well, that's it from my side. I can take any questions that you like. I have mine. Ready? Oh, it's more. No. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mirai. This was wonderful. Mine is still cooking a little bit. I'll send a photo. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you so much, Mirai. Great. <laughs> Next time we'll look Everybody, better. <laughs> can we show the, the creation? One second, and we try to take it all together. Everybody shows? Yeah, okay. Three. Three. Two. One. Smile. Smile again. Three. Two. One. Smile. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. I can send to to Mirai later. You also, uh, if you want to contact me on anything that you would like to buy from the Turkish market, that any questions you have. I mean, I cannot tell that I'm an expert, I'm not a professional, but wow. for anything that you would like to buy, um, I'm, I'm a good uh, market searcher in Turkey, so I would like to help you in any kind of things as well. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Ukrainian chicken. Great, thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.